The film of the song spinner's web signals the coming of the Umivi. They will shriek from the sky and take us one at a time. Their fangs will drip with the stealing poison. Their bellies will be fat with eggs. The song spinner says that the Umivi will take any bukabu they find back to their nests, paralyze us, and lay eggs in our stomachs. We will still be alive when the starving little Umivi hatchling make its first meal of us. From the days before my first whip, I remember those stories. As all young Bukabu, I thought they were told only to frighten us. So I thought. Until the song spin us wrong one night, many star turns ago. The next morning, three of my sisters were gone. I hear the from now. It is steady, resonant. I hear it over the night breeze gently rocking my web around me. I long to climb into the shadows of the giant Lupanchata tree, to fold myself into my favorite knot hole and wait until dawn. But that is not our way. If I hide, my brothers and sisters could be taken without warning. I take up the from. Plucking at my web with four of my arms, in time with the song spinner, spreading the word. Two more arms prepare my bow, and arrows tipped with the poison scraped from the glistening skin of Ikchokcho. I travel to the river myself, my bag laden with the flies to trade. The Ikchokcho were hungry and generous. I have ten arrows worth of their slimy venom. There is a high hum on the wind. My web vibrates with the sound. An Umivi coming for me. I brace my bow and draw both strings with two legs. I am careful not to blink all of my eyes at the same time, but my legs tremble with the tauntness of the bow as I listen to the night with every hair of my skin. It erupts from the darkness like a bolt of fire from a storm. The Umivi slams into my web and I grab hold of the strands with my rear legs, taken off guard by the sudden motion. My web jerks the enemy back and forth violently, and I hear muffled cries as it becomes more and more tangled in my sticky strands. What luck! The Umivi are usually not so careless. I draw my bow, but the Umivi straggling shakes the strands so much that I cannot place a shot. I sheath my weapon and descend. The Umivi is likely so entangled that it is safe to do the task up close, and if it struggles any longer, I'll have to spend half the night repairing the damage. I am close now. It still fights against my strands, but its chest is heaving with the exertion. It's larger than I. Only six legs to my eight, but with gossamer wings that reflect the moonlight like the river does. I am transfixed. Never have I seen an Umivi up close. It struggles again, and I catch a glimpse of its eyes. Large, bulbous. Only two of them, but just one is the size of my head. I hang there, upside down, just a few feet from the Umivi's face. I should kill it. It is helpless and hopelessly caught in the sticky strands. It would do far worse to me given half a chance. But I am curious. The song spinner has chided me for that many a time. I crane my head and ask, Why did you blunder into my web? It struggles again. If you are to kill me, then be quick about it. A female. Of course it would be. The males are drones. Stupid and not inclined to lay eggs. Be quick about it, I pray you. And why would I grant you a quick death, winged one? I know you only want to plant your spawn into me, to feed on me at its leisure. You ask for mercy that you aren't prepared to give. Fool! She struggles again and draws a small, thin knife from a sheath of her thorax. She cuts one or two strands, but will never escape. Defeated, she stares at me. Don't you know? 
a fire approaches from where the sun falls. Trees die by the dozens before it, even now. Can you see the orange sky? I had not. The sky holds enemies of the Bukabu, and not just Umidi. We stay shaded by our sacred Lupanjata trees, avoiding the sky and the death it brings. A fire? Of course I knew about the fire, I claim. I was just about to warn the others when I received warning of your attack. Leave it to you, Umi, to snatch your breathing host while the forest burns. Her head droops. She stops struggling. I cannot lay eggs. You have nothing to fear from me. Better I should die in the flames anyway. The sisters would never let me live without scorn. By now, I can feel the heat rise ever so slightly across the hairs on my skin. The fire comes. To me, we did not lie. I have to warn the others. The song spinner. She would be so caught up with the Umidi fleeing the flames that she might not realize the danger. I reverse myself, secure my weapons and run down the strands to my tree. From there, I can attach a line and leap to the next tree where others dwell. We can then spread the warning. It is up to me now. My tree stands closest to where the sun falls and I would be the first to sense the flames. I touch my spinnerets to the branch and make ready to leap. Something stops me from doing it. I crane my neck and catch the struggles of the Umivi in my web. She will never escape it and will burn to death when the fire reaches my tree. I should leave her. But instead, I leap, training a line, swinging back into my web. I am just beside the Umivi. She stares at me with her enormous eyes. What are you doing? You will burn here. As will you. Give me your knife. She hesitates. Then she hands it to me. The blade is handsome and the handle is bird bone. A quick death, I pray you, she repeats. Instead, I cut the lines that hold her and swing her across my back the way I've seen our females do with their egg sacs. I touch my spinneret to the web, struggling to hold my balance with the huge Umivi on my back. Tell me your name, I groan, more for the distraction than anything else. I am the tender. I affix my spinneret to the web, attach a line and grip the tender with two legs. I am Tuck Tuck. Hold on. I leap. We fall, trailing a strand from the web. The breeze catches us and we swing toward the nearest Lupanjata tree. I catch the bark and shift the tender around, sticking her to the tree. I take her knife and cut the remaining strands around her. Suddenly she catches me by the hand and the throat. Her fangs planted just a hair breath from my neck. I can smell the poison bulbing up from her. She is larger than I and far stronger. Slowly, she pulls away. I am barren. I thought if I could bring back a bukabu for one of my sisters, I might regain honor. She looks at me, the poison still dripping from her fangs. But I cannot. She looks toward the direction from which the flames approach then back at me. Tak tak, I can take you and fly. We can both escape this place. I shake my head. I must warn my people. You can't stay with me. I know you can go back to your sisters. She laughs. Your people would kill me and we both know it. She picks the remains of my web from her wings and spreads them. The moon glows from them and I suck in my breath at the beauty. Goodbye, Tak Tak. Thank you for my life. I know it. Her wings disappear in the blaze of vibration. She launches from the tree and is gone. I began my climb to my brethren, but not without looking at slivers of moonlight and remembering Tatenda's wings.